Hi everyone, welcome to my latest video. Today I'm going to be looking at isolating virtual machine networking using uh, network namespaces in the same techniques that containers do their network namespaces to get container isolated networking. So it's a little bit silly what I'm doing here. Um, I'm effectively social distancing my virtual machines from my main computer here by by creating this virtual network inside of my main computer um, and, and doing things kind of with two layers of isolation rather than just the virtual machine being isolated. So it is a little bit silly here. I'm doing a little bit more uh, isolation than I need to do. And often this second layer of isolation gets in the way of, of doing things on my network because um, Creating this secondary network means that I'm no longer getting um, DHCP from my router to my or, uh, to my virtual machines. So it's a little bit of, uh, of an annoyance there. However, um, one of the good things about doing this is that if you're using Firecracker, which demands bridged networking, and you're using a wireless network card, which is sometimes difficult to run bridged networking on, it's actually quite easy to use this technique to be able to do things inside of your machine to create a whole bunch of virtual machines inside of your machine and not have to port forward anything, not have to port forward um, uh, port 2222 to the virtual machine's SSH port. You don't have to do that. You can just SSH into the virtual machine's IP and it's easy peasy lemon squeezy. Um, so let me show you the end result of, of what I'm doing here. Uh, so I've got this Arch virtual machine up and it is running inside of the network namespace and I have given it the IP address of 192.168.1.4. And on the, the network namespace in which I'm running it, I have this network of, I have my, this is my um, one half. Um, you can think of this as, as each zero on the virtual machine, on the, the container network. And then I have a bridge and a tap into it. Um, and on the default uh, network, the just my regular uh, network that I boot up into, I have my ENP8S0, which is my actual physical card with the, the Ethernet connected into it um, that goes to my router. Um, and then I have this VETH host test um, Ethernet pair. So what happens here is this v, VETH host test connects to get back into that network namespace here connects to this vns test so in fact i have a little diagram of what's happening here so oops so right here at the bottom we've got we've got my virtual machine and the virtual machine has the ip address of 192.168.1.4 and it's using a tap onto a bridge to get um, communication into the um, network namespace of the container. So this container uh, is called VNet NS test, or sometimes I call it VNet NS1. Um, right now I'm calling it test. So uh, to do the IP net NS, you can see that I've got this VNet NS test. So I'm connecting uh, my virtual machine using a tap of this bridge uh, to connect to this VEATH NS, which is 192.168.1.2. Now, in, in using bridge networking, I don't actually have to give that, um, that side of this VEATH pair an IP address, but I have in this case. Uh, so I'm using it to connect into this VEATH pair. And this VEATH pair connects my uh, default, uh, my default um, 
network namespace, which is using this Veeth host, which has an IP address of 192.168.1.1. And this 1.1 is acting as the gateway for everything inside of the network namespace, for everything inside of the container. So after I connect up from my container to my, my main computer here, that's all well and good, but I also want everything in the container to be able to get out to the internet. So using IP tables, I've got a very simple rule set just saying forward, um, uh, if, if the container asks for, um, uh, transmission, please do NAT forwarding and stuff like that so that um, the container that can connect out to the, to the internet. So one thing about this container is that um, um, computers outside of my PC can't get into the container. And that's because I haven't done any IP forwarding to forward things going into my computer to then go to be forwarded into the container. I would then have to do forwarding from the container into the virtual machine, but that's not the goal here. The goal here is just to create a um, an internal network that I can develop on, that I can fool around with inside of the computer that I'm working on right now. Um, so yeah, uh, let me show you the code. So got to bring up my NS here and this is this work here is just to kind of get up some uh, command line options to set like what name I want the network to be called and stuff like that. Do I want it to be called test or do hickey one or just dash one, whatever that is. Uh, I want to be able to kind of bring it up and down and I want to be able to set a bridge or to not set a bridge. And in a few minutes here, I'll show you what you can do without a bridge. So, um, the real work here is done by the IP command, and that IP command is uh, the IP route to um, package on your machine. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a Veeth pair, um, and I'm giving it the names of, um, uh, what names am I giving it here? Let me quit out of what I'm doing right now and we'll do it all from the beginning here. So I'll exit out of the network namespace and I will bring it down. All right, so I don't have any, I don't have any uh, IP net NS. I don't have anything other than the default network namespace running right now. So using NS, I'm going to bring up a new network namespace. I'm going to call it test. And I'm going to say, uh, jump into the network namespace uh, after you finish creating it and bring up bridge networking inside of the network namespace. So the network name that I'm, I'm bringing up is called VNet NS test. And I'm creating a, a virtual ethernet pair which is the virtualized idea of of you know ethernet wire so it's 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 the virtualized concept of an ethernet wire back on camera here all right so back to the code So I've created both points of the wire. Now I'm going to give the, the default side, the PC side of the wire, an IP ad address of 192.168.1, or if I'm doing multiple IP address, it'll be two, three, four, five. So in this case, it's 192.168.1.1 with a network mask of 255.255.255.0. Um, and I'm going to apply that to Veth host, which again is called um, Veth host test. So on the default network namespace, namespace it is Veth. Veth. Oops, I'm inside of my machine here. So it is the Veth host test. 
So I've given it 1.1 in this case. I am then going to set that, that, um, that link to running. I'm going to set it up. So uh, in the olden days of, of Linux, this would be if, uh, if config, uh, um, vnet, vth dash host dash test up. I'm just turning it on basically. I'm then creating that network namespace. Um, I'm setting the network namespace um, connection and I'm taking that connection and I'm plugging it into the network namespace. So I'm taking the wire and I'm plugging it in into the network namespace uh, network. So I'm, I'm doing, I'm creating this side of the pipe. I'm plugging it in to the, to the container. Um, I'm then turning it on. I'm just setting it up. And I'm also turning on the loopback device, the network loopback loop device. Then inside of the container, inside of the network namespace, I'm creating a bridge. I'm attaching the wire that we just plugged into the container. And I'm, I'm, I'm setting that as um, a, a slave to the bridge. So the bridge is now controlling that side of the wire. Um, I'm giving the wire uh, in the container an IP address, but that isn't necessary. I don't actually have to do that here, um, but I'm, I'm doing it anyways, just because. Um, I'm then giving an IP address to BR0. So our bridge has an IP address and that IP address is 192.168.1.3. So let me uh, again, Here's our BR0, and I'm giving it 192.168.1.3. And then um, I'm, uh, I'm also setting the bridge up, of course. Um, and I'm then saying that um, the bridge has a, a default route to the internet, basically, of 192.168.1.1. So I'm saying that the, the gateway to the internet is the host PC side of the ethernet pair that we created up here. Now this means that everything on my host machine will now be able to talk to machines inside of the container. So when we create virtual machines and we give the virtual machines IP addresses, um, we can now SSH into those virtual into those virtual machines. However, in order to get those virtual machines to go out to the wide internet, we have to connect up the um, the 192.168.1.1 network. We have to do some um, some NAT uh, forwarding, some IP tables NAT forwarding to the real um, the real Ethernet card that that the physical card that I have inside of the computer. And I'm just doing some really basic IP tables to do that. So I'm just saying uh, things that that go out from from the uh, from the the container network um, can uh, if if there's like a stream a T TCP stream going on here, then we can accept the 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 downward the inward coming TCP stream as well. That sort of thing. Um, we're not doing any fancy rules with with um, with IP tables here, and that's why computers outside of the the network can't initiate connections into the container. So after I set up the network namespace and I make the the bridge stuff going on, what I'm going to do and what I'm going to do is then run my um, my QMU runner um, script to run an Arch machine. And I'm gonna say give it a bridge. So let me let me show you the fake output to this. So it's going to run this big long command, which just basically um, brings up the the arch um, the arch machine inside of QEMU and does bridge networking on that arch machine. So if I run this command, 
We'll get the Arch Linux machine running. And I'll log into this. And if I do an IP-A, uh, IP you'll see that ENS4 doesn't have an IP address yet. So that's one of the problems with doing this container net, uh, this container stuff right now is that um, I haven't set up DHCPD in order to, to give um, my uh, virtual machines automatic DHCP um, connections um, by default. Um, I'm just kind of being lazy with it. I'm, I'm going to set it up manually. And I have a script to set it up manually. So I've got this netup command, which just does an IP link set ENS um, 4, in my case, up. It applies the IP address of 192.168.1.4 uh, with the network mask 255.255.255.0 to ENS 4. And then it sets the gateway uh, to the, the, the rest of the internet is 192.168.1.1. So let me run this up. And now you'll see that I've got uh, the IP address of 192.168.1.4. Now I find I can't highlight anything inside of QEMU here. So I'm going to bring up a... I'm going to bring up a um, new shell here. And I'm going to SSH into that virtual machine that we just brought up. And you'll notice, like, I didn't, I didn't do any, um, I didn't do any IP firewall stuff to port forward or anything. I didn't port forward two two to the the virtual machines port two two. I just, it's just a, it's just a computer on a network that my PC can talk to right now. Um, so yeah, if I take a look at the IP A, I've got. 192.168.1.4 and my route is to my default route is to 192.168.1.1. And if I do a trace route to www.google.com, you'll see that I'm first going to the 192.168.1.1 gateway. I'm then going to my router. And then after that, I'm going to Rogers, who is my ISP. So, uh, rather simple here. I'm being a little silly with the multiple layers of, of security with doing the, um, the container network name spacing and then putting a, a virtual machine inside of the container. Um, but it's, it's fun to do. Um, and we learned a lot about uh, using IP route. So one last thing here, um, which is separate from doing virtual machines, is I want to show you something. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get out of my... I'm going to close down my QEMU here. And then I will get out of the network namespace and kill the network namespace. And I've got nothing here. So I'm going to start up the network namespace again, but this time I'm not going to do bridge networking. So here you can see I've just got that Ethernet pair and I've got the loopback device. Now I can do trace routes what's going on here hmm. have I changed my script unnecessarily What's going on? Pause the video, I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. Uh, looks like I just had to refresh my uh, network manager because I was having trouble uh, getting DNS resolution. So I simply turned, um, I, I simply started up network manager. All right, so I am inside of the network namespace and I can do a trace route to Google and you can see that I've got, I go to my gateway of 
for the virtual for the container. I then go to my real gateway on the router, and then I go to Rogers. But what I can do here, let me open up, get rid of you. So this is my, this side, the right hand side is my default network namespace. So if I do a trace right here, you'll see that I'm not going to 192.168.1.1. I'm just going directly to the, to the router. So what I can do is I can create a wire guard connection. And I neither condone using a VPN. I don't, con I don't condone using TorGuard. I'm not being paid to uh, showcase TorGuard in this video. Um, yeah, it just so happens that it's the um, the VPN uh, that I have uh, uh, um, uh, that I've that I've paid for at the moment. I use different ones. It's just that right now I'm using TorGuard, so I can connect up to TorGuard, and I'll connect to uh, a server in New Jersey. And now sometimes when I do this, I have to restart my network manager, but we'll see if I have to do that. Okay, so TorGuard has connected up and we can see that I have a trace route now to Google, not going from 192.168.0.1 to Rogers, but instead going to the endpoint of WireGuard and then going to somewhere in New Jersey. So. Uh, my IP address right now inside of the network, inside of the container network is 23.226.128.130. So it's pretty close to this. However, on my default uh, network, yeah, we're going to have to restart the network manager. So sudo system control restart network na manager. So you can see on my normal, my default network, I'm not going through WireGuard here, but I am going through WireGuard over here. Uh, so yeah, um, with network namespaces, you can use WireGuard to, to further set up um, encrypted, um, encrypted pathways and keep those encrypted pathways separate from your your host's main computer. So that's that's kind of fun here. So if I was to uh, to fire up Firefox from within the network namespace, fire up Firefox and let's go. What's my IP Tor Guard? We'll go to the Tor Guard test, and it's saying that I'm in New York. Now, I'm not in New York, I'm in New Jersey, but I guess the, the IP address checker can't really isolate New York from New Jersey, which, okay. Um, but yeah, uh, if I were to do this on my, my default, if I were to run Firefox from my default namespace, um, it would show where I am in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Um, now, I don't want to give you my exact IP address here. Let's just say it's a variation of 174... 11312 something. So yeah, I hope you have learned something. Uh, I hope you've learned something about uh, IP route 2, about Linux, about container networking, about virtual machine networking using bridges and taps. Um, yeah, uh, there's a lot of information in this video. I'm sorry if it's a little frantic and a little kind of jumbled up, but there should be some good nuggets of information if you're able to kind of parse out this stuff. So thank you very much and I'll see you later.